Hello, Bethel family, Pastor Joe here and friends. Hey, you know what today is? Today is Wednesday. It is time for a Bible study. Now, you may hear a lot of noise while we're having this Bible study because we have a big old crew here at Bethel trying to get uh, straightened out after we got all of our floorings uh, redone and uh, did a lot of remodel in the church. I guess I shouldn't say remodel, but a lot of refurbishing. And so people are here working. But hey, it's time for a Bible study. So we're going to dig into God's Word together. We have been in the book of Isaiah. And so we're jumping five chapters ahead, and we're going to do that next week week and hit chapter 40, but this week we're in chapter 35 of Isaiah 40. And so let's dig in and we're going to learn about the highway of hope. Now, what's interesting about this text is throughout Isaiah, he offers constant encouragement, uh, hope. Um, he offers to the people who are in despair uh, some joy and excitement. And the really the climax of this text is there's going to be a transition uh, from sorrow and mourning to joy and gladness. Now, I don't know about you, but I need some joy and gladness right now. I have been overwhelmed with our present circumstances and, uh, and things going around in all of our lives. But let me encourage you. Our God has promised us so much more than what we choose to focus on. And I want to throw this out uh, just because I'm crazy and I've thought about it all week. Last week, I spoke about Isaiah 30 and talked about loss of sight. And I don't know if I ever made this clear, but in Isaiah 30, the people of Israel had lost sight of God and were focused on Egypt. Well, you know, here in Isaiah 35, the people are overwhelmed with what they're seeing with their eyes, and they're not seeing beyond their present circumstances. And, you know, I, I came up with a thought a while back, and the thought was, we have not had our best day yet. And for many of us, sometimes we go back to the past, or we think about times in our lives that were pinnacle moments, the birth of a child, a wedding day, a graduation, a new car, a new home, something. And we say that was the greatest day of our lives. But if we belong to Jesus, the greatest day of our life will be the day we meet him face to face in eternity when Satan will be put down, our bodies will be made new, and we will have the presence of God eternally transforming us completely into the image that he had prepared for us. Uh, no more death, no more sorrow, no more pain, no more enemy. So better days are coming. Let's dig into this text together. And so I want to encourage you as always, um, I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. You grab your favorite translation and dig in and consider these thoughts commentary as you read the scripture. Well, the Bible study, the Highway of Hope, Isaiah 35, 1 through 10, September 23rd, 2020. So what can we learn? Let's hear this scripture today. Isaiah uh, chapter 35, verses 1 through 10. Even the wilderness and desert will be glad in those days. The wasteland will rejoice and blossom with spring crocuses. Yes, there will be an abundance of flowers and singing and joy. The deserts will become as green as the mountains of Lebanon, as lovely as Mount Carmel or the plain of Sharon. There the Lord will display his glory, the splendor of our God. With this news, strengthen those who have tired hands and encourage those who have weak knees. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong and do not fear, for your God is coming to destroy your enemies. He is coming to save you. And when he comes, he will open the eyes of the blind and unplug the ears of the deaf. The lame will leap like a deer, and those who cannot speak will sing for joy. Springs will gush forth in the wilderness, and streams will water the wasteland. The parched ground will become a pool, and springs of water will satisfy the thirsty land. Marsh, grass, and reeds, and rushes will flourish where desert jackals once lived, and a great road will go through that once deserted land. It will be named the highway of holiness. Evil-minded people will never travel on it. It will be only for those who walk in God's ways. Fools will never walk there. 
Lions will not lure along its course, nor any other ferocious beast. There will be no other dangers. Only the redeemed will walk on it. Those who have been ransomed by the Lord will return. They will enter Jerusalem singing, crowned with everlasting joy. Sorrow and mourning will disappear, and they will be filled with joy and gladness. Hey, hear that last verse again, verse 10. Those who have been ransomed by the Lord will return. They will enter Jerusalem singing, crowned with everlasting joy. Sorrow and mourning will disappear, and they will be filled with joy and gladness. What an encouraging text. And maybe you wonder, Joe, why do you pick these scriptures? Well, the Holy Spirit lays them on my heart, and that's the biggest reason. And I believe they're timeless, and they speak to our time today and the struggles that we're having because the struggle is real. We need hope. We need a highway of hope. So there's three things that I think happen in this text, and I'm going to tell you up front, and then we'll just dig in. First is there is a promised transformation of the terrain, of the territory, of the land. God cares about this planet. And if you think about the Garden of Eden, he created a perfect planet that was beautiful, lush, and had everything that was needed. Then there's going to be a transformation of lives that God cares not only about creation itself, but his creation, humanity. God wants to transform us, encourage us, bless us, strengthen us. And we'll hear that very language. And finally, God wants us to know he's on the job, that he has prepared something better for us. Our best day has not yet come. So again, remember last week we talked about loss of sight. Where, where are you fixing your eyes? Are you fixing your eyes on despair, discouragement, destruction that's happening all around us, negativity, evil? Are you fixing your eyes on the living God who's promised us an incredible horizon of hope? And listen, I don't want to be too pessimistic, but you know, we're not all staying here forever. Our days will soon be over. The best life, you know, you might live to be 80. Now, we have a, a lady in our community who's the oldest living Marine, Miss Dot, who's 107 years old. And you might get 107, 110, 115, but there is a day coming when we're going to leave old planet Earth behind. So let's dig in and see what we can learn here. Well, the first thing that I shared, a new design in landscaping, uh, no man's land, war-torn war territory. Hey, a new design in landscaping. One of the things I thought about uh, years ago, um, I live in a church parsonage, and the church came over and they put a new roof on the church parsonage. And they also did some landscaping. And it's amazing how some plants, uh, just just uh, trees and all those things can transform how we even view where we live. Well, the problem that Israel's having at this time is that they live in no man's land, war torn territory. It would have been Edom, and God has destroyed Edom, and it was the land of Esau. And remember, Esau had not been pleasing to God, and so Jacob and Esau had had their struggles. And the people of Esau, the Edomites, had been the ones who had warred against Israel, and God had finally uh, desolated them. And so we know that God protects his people, and yet uh, there's kind of this no man land going on, and the people of Israel are overwhelmed by the negativity of what they see in this no man's land. And so the scripture starts by saying even the wilderness and desert will be glad in those days. In this desert, desolate land, something good is about to happen. So what happens? Uh, some sprucing up required, or is required, or is required. The wasteland will rejoice and blossom with spring crocuses. Now, I don't know if you know what a crocus is, uh, but they're these flowers that have a single bud on them, and they're known for being purple, I think, and yellow and white, and they are just beautiful, and they usually are one of the very first flowers to blossom in the spring that lets you know something good is coming. Spring is coming, and God wants us to know better days are coming. Some sprucing up is required, and our God can handle it, and some new life too. And so hear this, yes, there will be an abundance of flowers 
and singing and joy, the desert will become as green as the mountains of Lebanon, as lovely as Mount Carmel or the plain of Sharon. The Lord will display his glory, the splendor of our God. So our God is up to something amazing. And then in verses 6 and 7, uh, the end of verse 6 and then verse 7, springs will gush forth in the wilderness and streams will water the, the wasteland. There's actually an old devotional book called Streams in the Desert. And Streams in the Desert is taken from verse 6 because uh, in the King James, now some of y'all love that King James, that's how it says it. And streams will water, streams will rise up in the desert. Streams will water the desert. The parched ground will become a pool and springs of water will satisfy the thirsty land. Marsh grass and reeds and rushes will flourish where desert jackals once lived. Listen, God is going to bring life back to dead land. Uh, to dead territory. So there's a transformation in the landscaping. Well, fresh mown lawns, trim trees, and a beautiful flower garden change our perception of a place and cause us to feel joy and gladness even when sorrow and mourning are prevalent. The power of fall and the changing color of leaves is almost upon us. And think about how you feel when you see those beautiful oranges and reds. Well, our God is going to change the landscape, but not only does he change change the landscape, a powerful transformation of mind, body, and soul will take place at the coming of our Lord. And I'm going to get to that in a second. But God not only says, I can change the landscape. And if you think about Revelation, there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. But we're also going to have transformed bodies. That's the promise of the New Testament. Well, encouragement is needed. And so where does this encouragement come from? If you look at verse 3 that I kind of jumped ahead to, with this news, strengthen those who have tired hands and encourage those who have weak knees. Listen, church and people. Um, I want to encourage you, be an encourager. Listen, everybody can spew hate and evil and discouragement, but listen, if we know God, we should be people who, who follow in the tradition of Barnabas, and we should be encouragers. So what else is going to happen? Not only should there be encouragement, but physical health is available. Our God knows how to transform our bodies, and so it says, strengthen those who have tired hands. And encourage those who have weak knees. And listen, fear can cause our hands to tremble, our knees to buckle. I've got a good friend who's struggling with Parkinson's disease. And you know, his legs are weak. But I'm here to tell you, there's coming a day when God's going to give him new legs, new strength and new power. Our God can transform even our physical beings if we'll allow him. And what else do we learn? And our soul's are the greater issue. And so listen to this. The lame will leap like a deer, and those who cannot speak will sing for joy. Springs will gush forth in the wilderness. God is going to bring new life to those. But listen to verse 4. Say to those who have fearful hearts, be strong and do not fear, for our God is coming to destroy our enemies. He is coming to save you. Now, an Old Testament concept of salvation would have been a physical saving from a physical enemy, like overcoming Egypt. That would have been a salvation. But we know that in the New Testament, our souls are what God is all about saving. Well, where we focus our attention makes all the difference in how we cope with the world we all live in. Our focus is to be on the living God who transforms our very existence if we allow him. Our God says, lift your gaze. Lift your gaze off the turmoil of this life and the struggles of this world in this day. Look to me and we can find streams of water in our desert land. Be encouraged. Well, and finally, our God is here. The holy highway is coming soon. And I don't know about you. I live in a place where they're always tearing up the road. And I, I there was a huge pothole in front of Walmart today about knocked my teeth out. And don't you want some new highways? Boy, you get on a new highway and the road is smooth and your car starts to relax and you start to relax. Well, God says there's a holy highway coming soon. Um, in verse 8, it says, and a great road will go through that once deserted land. It will be named the highway of holiness. Now, I started all this by saying that God is preparing a highway of hope. We can have hope because of the holiness of our God. 
And our God is a holy God and expects us to be a holy people. But there's coming a day, and listen to this, look at this next thing. Total protection is granted. Evil-minded people will never travel on this highway of holiness. It will be only for those who walk in God's ways. Fools will never walk there. Do you hear that encouragement? Total protection. The enemy won't be able to come after us and those who would work for our demise. And listen, maybe you're upset by the political wrangling. Maybe you're overwhelmed by the anxiety that they try to throw out there. Listen, our God says he can take care of us. And there's coming a day when we will be totally protected from evil. I can't wait for that day. So let the party begin now. Listen to this. Verse 9. Well, let me go on to verse 10. Those who have been ransomed by the Lord will return. They will enter Jerusalem singing, crowned with everlasting joy. Sorrow and mourning will disappear, and they will be filled with joy and gladness. Listen, there's coming a day when sorrow and mourning are going to end. And you know, the more we focus on the living God, those days come quicker. Not our eternal reward, but the day-to-day living that we experience in John 10.10. It says, the enemy came to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you may have life to the full, or the abundant life. So let the party begin now. Well, our God isn't on vacation. He knows what he is doing. He wrote it all down for us so that we would not lose hope. Better days are right around the corner. So we need to fixate on that. Fixate on the things of God. Trust him for all that he has promised because he will keep his promises. Well, We need to know that God is on our side, that we can have hope. We don't need to be overwhelmed by despair. Our God is offering us hope. So listen, quit watching all those political ads. Quit getting stressed out about the anxieties uh, that the world would have us to experience. Trust in the Lord. Fixate on him. Fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men that we might not grow weary and lose heart. Hey, don't lose heart today, brothers and sisters. God is going to take care of us. He made promises and he keeps all of his promises. Let's pray together. Father God, we are grateful for your love for us, for these words from Isaiah, these these gospel words, words of encouragement and hope that tell us that better days are coming. And Lord Jesus, we know that that is really already happened with your coming, and yet we're waiting on phase two when we will experience your presence and your power, your goodness forever, when we are eternally separated from those who are evil. And so, Lord, until that day, give us the grace we need to survive the struggles that we endure and remind us that every day is a day of hope as we trust in our God. And we will thank you for it because we ask this together in the name of Jesus. And let all God's children say out loud, Amen and amen. Hey, the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and give you hope. And stay on that highway of hope because that's where God is and he wants you to go with him. God bless you. Have a good day.